Hot. Reset okay. the clock, Mark. Oh. Okay. And we're talking for how long? Ten minutes. <laughs> okay. Or shorter if you need to. No, it's all right. Just so you know. Let's see. I talk a lot, even more so when I'm nervous, so be careful. <laughs> uh, don't worry, I'll cut you off. I'll cut you off. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> it's, am I saying correct? Mejas? Mejias. Mejias. Phonetically, Mejias Fuertes. You're going to say your last name. <laughs> I'm going to be like, Dr. Jacqueline? Yes, <laughs> Dr. J for short. It's all good. That's what my <laughs> students call me, so it's all good. No, I, I don't mind the Dr. J piece. Dr. J. Yeah. Well, let me, let me show and my, we nothing. are five, four, three. Hey, everybody. It is Eric with, uh, with Dr. Jacqueline. Mejias Fuertes. <laughs> yeah, because I would have butchered that. Like in every video, she never called me up and goes, you're messing up my name. She hasn't seen every video. Yeah, <laughs> I, I have to see those. We'll have a conversation a little bit later on that. I'm going to get a special <laughs> class. I'm going to be sitting in your office. She's going to be like, repeat after me. <laughs> Write it 75 times on the blackboard. Um, so yes. you are uh, partnering with us for an event. Yes. In March. Can't wait. Yep. Um, and um, but uh, you are the D director of the NJSBDC at Brookdale Community College, which was Mammoth in Ocean County region. Correct. Yes. And you've been doing that for what, 15 years? No, 16 years, actually. 16. Director, I've been at the helm 12 years. But prior to that, I was the assistant director. And prior to that, I was an entrepreneur. So still am. But still are. <laughs> And, and you're also a professor. Yes, I am. Um, my specialty is entrepreneurship. I always feel that everyone should engage in entrepreneurship, even if it's just developing the mindset to think a little differently. That is where I come in. I will encourage you to know when to give entrepreneurship a try because you would be surprised what you could come up with. And the idea is that, you know, you may be tinkering with something and bringing it to fruition is huge. So when I was able to do that after failing a couple of times, um, it brought me so much joy and to know that I can actually do this was amazing. All right. So I lucked out, unlike some people, that I work for two organizations that really help nurture what I love to do, and that is to help businesses grow and entrepreneurs get their business off the ground, whatever that may be. So for me, working for, I am a Brookdale employee, but we are funded through the Small Business Development Center, which is the headquarters is out of Rutgers University. So I always tell people I'm a hybrid when they ask me, who do you work for? I said, I work for yeah, two organizations good. that actually help, again, fuel my desire to spread entrepreneurship. So for people who uh, are viewing this who are not in New Jersey, okay. Uh, it's not just NJSBDC. So right, it's a correct. Machine. It is, it is. The SBDC, um, using an acronym when you work with the government, right? But it's a small business development center, and here in the United States, it's called ASBDC, America's Small Business Development Center, which means you can find us in all 50 states, as well as U.S. territories, which includes Puerto Rico, Guam, the Virgin Islands, and the Samoas. And we are starting to expand um, what we do or helping other countries do the same thing because I'm sure you've heard it in the past that small businesses are the backbone of the economy. Yeah. So not only does it hold true here in the United States, but it holds true in many other countries as well. Right. So the ASBDC has been 
branching out a lot into Latin America. Now they're looking at Africa as well to really use the model that was developed to move it forward. And that is that through our confidential, no cost counseling, which is amazing, uh, and through education is how we help individuals not just you know, develop their idea, but create strategies and plans that are gonna help them implement a successful business. Okay. Wow. <laughs> I know it's a mouthful. It is a mouthful, <laughs> but I mean, you know, you know, it, it's it's the unfortunate thing is is, and I, it, we see it, and it's been forever still. I don't understand, even in the day of the internet, how many small businesses do not understand the resources that are out there for them Absolutely. that they can obtain, um, and it drives me nuts. It yeah. drives me nuts, and it, I think in part it drives me nuts because I was even when Mark. Um, mm. We were, we were blind in the dark trying mm -hmm. to figure it all out. We didn't even know the resources were there. You know what I mean? Um, I think we really got involved when we got into government contracting, and even then we didn't know how many resources. I don't think I'd heard of NJBAC until a couple of years ago. Yeah, the Business Action Center, which when you look at um, NJBAC, it has been around for a while, but remember there used to be the New Jersey, um, what is it, commercial, uh, Commerce? and that changed over into BAC. So sometimes the agencies change and come up with different names. But here in the state of New Jersey, you know, you have the New Jersey Economic Development Authority, you have NJBAC, you have so many other resources that are out there because here in New Jersey, we take it seriously. Right. We know how important it is um, to help small businesses, you know, to make sure that they're receiving the information they need to make the best decisions. I mean, in our particular center, we focus a lot on technology, and it is because we live in the fourth industrial revolution. And what does that mean for some of you who may not understand what that means? We live with artificial intelligence. I mean, AI is huge. It's a year now, right, that AI has come out, but it's something that our SBDC from years ago, we were looking at how does technology help businesses succeed? How does it help them get that competitive edge? And that is what we bring to the table. You know, our center really focused on that uh, for a long time, and now our network as a whole is doing the same thing. As a matter of fact, I met somebody. Um, oh, you, I just had a meeting with him. Ah. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> Abron. Okay, oh. Abron from, yes. Um, he's with Creative Labs, and he actually worked with me. Um, and when I say me, I'm talking about my center because I do nothing alone. Um, it's always a team effort where we created a pilot program in Long Branch called a Long Branch Accelerator. And he came on board because of his experience with NJEDA and being able to get funding to get that particular venture off the ground. And he's an interesting character in that his um, path to entrepreneurship has pinged off of so many different things. But we've worked really closely together and we will continue working closely together, taking our services to underserved communities. Right. You know, for them to really come out and say, you know, as a community event, those individuals that say, who, I think I have an idea, or I think I have a product that I, you know, I wonder if that's gonna work. And we're here to make sure that we help them, you know, whether it's with research, getting them information, really making sure that that product is going to be viable or that business is going to be viable. Because one of our goals through the SBDC is to make sure that when the business idea comes through, that it is something that's going to be worthwhile, that you are going to make money off it, a profit behind it. Because I know from having ventures in the past, it didn't quite succeed, um, but you learn from your failures, and I'm good with that, is that if I had had those tools that I had for my last business, and actually my last business was when I came to the state of New Jersey, and I actually came to the SBDC, because I wanted to make sure I was getting it right in a new state. I'm originally from New York. So when that happened, I realized the pieces that were missing to make my business a success. So making sure that we take that to those communities who are less likely to look for the resources, yeah. right? So in terms of resources, we're here to assist them any way we can. We really look for those that are in the underserved market. And by that, I mean black and brown community, women um, business yeah. owners as well, and some communities that are definitely underserved. And we have yeah. quite a few across the whole state of New Jersey. So we really work with them. And 
making it convenient for the entrepreneur, the small business owner to realize that these resources are right here in my backyard. I don't have to go far. Yeah. And more importantly, now we're offering it in different languages. Mm, you know, um, New Jersey, I don't know about any other states that are out there, but New Jersey is becoming very diverse. And in such, you know, by bringing people in and making them feel comfortable and providing the information in the language that they understand goes a long way in creating that successful, sustainable business. And I'm glad you bring that up because um, I, I, we had done, um, a couple of years ago, we did a bid. Uh, it was uh, for marketing in the healthcare community. I believe mm -hmm. it was in upstate New York. Mark and I did a bid. Mm -hmm. was it wrote on. I forget which okay. one. But they gave us the data mm -hmm. for the Latino and Hispanic community. Um, and they said that the data showed at all levels, not mm -hmm. just healthcare, but at all levels, the Hispanic and Latino community doesn't trust the government. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's not because, it's because they, f they f statistically feel that the minute they get involved with the government, the government's throwing away all the information to all other, it's like a free-for-all with private information. Mm -hmm. So it's really a misconception. It is. Absolutely. It's really a misconception. And um, I, just, I just had this conversation with a person from Americano newspaper as well. Okay about that um, and, and that they agreed that this was mm -hmm. a, a problem of misinformation and not an, or I don't want to say misinformation but maybe it is mis yeah. it's misunderstanding. It's a misunderstanding and I have to tell you that as a professor um, about I uh, can't remember how many years ago when I first became a director one of the programs that I wanted to implement was one for the Hispanic community and I would send out my marketing material I was marketing to them the same way I marketed to regular individuals, businesses. And while they were signing up, they weren't showing up. And I'm having this conversation with my marketing students and a student who was from Mexico at the time, he goes, Professor, because I am Latina. With the name Mejias Fuertes, you, you know I'm Latina, right? So he looked at me and he said, Professor, you're Latina, but you're from Puerto Rico, right? He goes, I'm Latino, but I'm from Mexico. In Mexico, we do not trust the government. You, being born and raised in the United States, being from Puerto Rico, you really don't look, you know, you don't look at government and go, oh my God, I don't trust you. And we realized that it was such a huge trust issue that we had to partner with other organizations that they trusted right. in order to validate what we were doing and to vouch for us and say, no, that is a good organization. Once that happened, our numbers of assisting the Hispanic population boomed. I mean, you know, we just looked at the numbers. It got so much so that we definitely have um, bilingual consultants at our center because it became such a huge bottleneck. I mean, I do speak Spanish fluently, but I couldn't be the one and all. Well, technically, so. you, you <laughs> might work, f you know, for BCC, for Brookdale. Right. You might be a professor, but you are tied to a government organization. Yes, at the end I of the am. Day, or a government-backed organization. Exactly. So, you know, normally I'm asking for advice for mm -hmm. small businesses, but in this case, I think I want to say, what do you want to say to other agencies similar to yourself in other states that are trying to reach out to the Hispanic community? Well, one thing is you have to gain their trust and make sure that the information you put out there, I mean, we live in a world against using technology. Use a translator, but make sure that it translates correctly. And making sure that when they come to the table, there's someone there who can speak their language. You would be surprised at what they're looking to create and how far they can go once the trust is there. Also understand the customs. Don't make an assumption that everyone does everything the same way, that everybody speaks the same way, that everybody has the same tone. You know, I've been told that I speak with a tone sometimes. <laughs> and I go, well, that's Latina, and it depends who's in the room and how loud do we want to get. <laughs> and it is what it is. It's part of the culture. Understand other people's culture. culture yeah. And again, you know, just 
we're talking about the Latino community, but it goes beyond the Latino community. And even within the Latino community, we have different dialects when it comes to Spanish. You know, even in the island of Puerto Rico, you could divide it up and go, oh, I know you're from the East Coast and I know you're from the West Coast based on how you speak. So imagine the whole Central America, imagine Latin America, those that are coming in from Spain, how different they're gonna speak. So making sure that you take the time, understand the culture, develop the trust, work with other organizations that they absolutely trust. You, you know, to me, that went so far and it opened so many doors, you know, not just for our organization, but community as well. So that would be, you know, for me is look at the culture. There's a book that a colleague, uh, not a colleague actually, my childhood friend gave me. And it was bow, what is it? Bow, shake hands, and kiss. And it has to do, has like 250 countries in it, what each country does. Because oh, wow. he's an avid traveler. And it's one of the things that it's one of my coffee books, basically right. sitting on my coffee table. And it's because I said, okay, what country are you going to? Do they allow tipping? No tipping. I went to Spain with a, a friend and she was like, we got a tip. And I said, no, that's an American thing. So understand other people's customs, yeah. you know. So really here for anyone who's looking to assist the Latino community gain their trust. Find out what their culture is. See how you can help them to feel comfortable. And I just don't want to say for the Latino community, but the Asian community, Asian, anyone, anyone. Understand, anyone. I mean, right now we're having a huge influx of businesses that are doing work with Africa. Understand, and Africa is a huge continent. Imagine all the countries within Africa. How different are they? What do they speak? You know, are you able to get a translator to help you, you know, translate your idea properly into that language? Mm -hmm. So for me, it, it really starts with trust, understand the culture, and from there you can build a wonderful relationship. Wow. So make those partnerships work yes, for you. Yes, make those partnerships work. So. Um, Dr. Jacqueline. May he ask for this. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Regional Director at NJSBDC at Brookdale Community College in Monmouth County, New Jersey. Um, mm -hmm. But it's America's SBDC, no mm -hmm. matter what state you're in. Um, there's regional offices in every state. Some cover multiple mm -hmm. areas. Uh, you can check them out at um, and guess, for, SBDC, well, right? ASBDC, right? And you could just Google that Google. here in the state of New Jersey, just giving New Jersey a plug. It is a network here, and we have 10 centers strategically located covering all 21 counties. So no matter where you are, whether you're in the north, central, south, or Jersey Shore, as we are, you can definitely reach out and see what SBDC is there for you. And we are happy to assist because that is what we do and also remember because of the way we're funded we're your tax dollars at work so you want to make sure <laughs> yeah i gotta throw that in there simply because we are we're funded in part by the sba small business administration in case you don't know the acronym and we are part of the technical support not the only resources out there but we are one and here in the state of new jersey our footprint is amazing when you look at it's covering the entire state. Yeah, it is. So. Okay. so thank you for being with us. Well, thank you for having me. As this was wonderful. Thank you. Um, and you guys uh, got to get out and you got to hustle. No yes. excuses. Don't make reasons excuses. There are resources out there, so check it out. And if you're not willing to go hunt down the resources, then get on our email list and we will email you resources. Absolutely. All right. We are out. <laughs> Come on. You. You're welcome. I tell you, you gotta shut me up. No. <laughs> <laughs>